A photo book, something that might seem completely far from the concept of evaluation. It is actually very interesting inspiration coming from experts such as Tomlinson and McTighe, who suggest that assessment to be effective should be more like a photo album than a single Polaroid. But how should it be similar to a photo book? In the sense that it should help us photograph the performance of a student in different moments and in different ways. Tomlinson and McTighe underline that evaluation needs to be designed functionally to the course outcomes and the evaluation itself should be perfectly coherent with these outcomes and with the function of the assessment. We need to make a clarification about group activities. Collective presentations are very important because the group together gives value to the work done. This could, however, be integrated with other types of assessments, for example, self-assessment, peer-to-peer assessment among group members, or even peer assessment across different groups. Thanks to Tomlinson and McTighe's insights, we have started to introduce the key elements of the design of an assessment action. We talked about the assessment objectives, we talked about the types of assessment and tests, and we introduced the importance of the assessment criteria of these tests, and lastly, of the utility of creating appropriate feedback. Let's now explore all four of these elements one by one. What are the objectives that an assessment can have? We have already seen how an evaluation can have a mostly summative objective at the end of a program. On the other hand, the formative assessment provides feedback to students and to teachers in relation to the development of the learning and teaching process. There are also some specific objectives of the assessment in the sense that we aim to verify specific intended learning outcome, both in case of summative and formative assessment. With this in mind, we will have to choose the best possible kind of test. Test is a Latin word that refers in general to all objects that we use to measure something. In particular, it derives from a term that identified the object that alchemists used to verify the amount of gold in a metal alloy. Therefore, we, when we think about tests, we need to encompass all kinds of tests that can verify the objectives. Once I have used a test, I will naturally have to assess the results. To assess them, I will need some criteria. Then I will need to provide feedback to those who submitted the test. The value of the feedback and the way I create it is essential to how the assessment process can have a positive role in the teaching and learning process. When we start designing an assessment, the first thing we must keep in mind, therefore, is that our assessment must be coherent with the general and specific objectives we aim for. The first thing we want to consider is the consistency of our assessment with the intended learning outcomes that we want to assess. Here we have an example of the intended learning outcome. In this case, we will have the student will be able performance, to recognize, action, starting from the analysis of blueprints and pictures, context of the performance, the Roman era religious buildings, content, built in the Italian territory, field of application. So if my goal is to assess the achievement of this intended learning outcome, the test I will submit to my students will, first of all, activate the action here described as to recognize, 
Then I will have to activate it in terms of the content that has been indicated in the intended learning outcome, in this case, the Roman era religious buildings. But here we have an additional element. Here we have the context of activation of the performance, that is starting from the analysis of blueprints and pictures. How could that be organized? I could provide students with a certain number of plans, photographs, of buildings in different styles, created in various contexts, and ask them to recognize the ones in a Romanic style built in the Italian territory and identify them correctly. If, on the other hand, I ask them to write an essay describing the key feature of the Romanic style buildings in the Italian territory, I would verify a slightly different intended learning outcome. I would be asking them to explicate their knowledge on that style in that context, but I would not be verifying this intended learning outcome that required the ability to recognize the blueprints and the photographs, and from that to determine the type of building and its context. As you can see, it is quite simple to imagine an assessment test on a specific topic that is truly coherent with an intended learning outcome, or close enough to it. We need to remember, though, that it is also quite simple to create assessment tests that can bring us to measure something that perhaps was not really the objective we wanted to bring our students to. Another important aspect we need to keep an eye on when designing an assessment test relates to the intended learning outcomes as a whole. Usually, during the teaching activity, I am facing a fairly articulated system of intended learning outcomes that may have a hierarchical order or range a disciplinary spectrum that could be very broad. The logistical aspects of the assessment tests, whether they are summative or formative, do not often allow us to test all the intended learning outcomes we have formulated for our course. So how can we orientate ourselves correctly? The most effective strategy is to select the intended learning outcomes we want to test keeping in mind the ones that are the most significant and important in relation to the context in which our students are developing. Specific profiles required at the end of the programs, as well as the prerequisites for other courses that students will be attending later in their career. Let's try to recap the key elements. To design an effective assessment of the intended learning outcomes, it's important to act in a multidimensional perspective, more like a photo book rather than a single picture. What does this mean? It means trying to create strategies to collect information on how, if, and how much our students have achieved the intended learning outcomes, both in terms of testing and activation, being that individual or in a group. The other very important element is that the assessment of the evaluation strategy needs to be very consistent with the intended learning outcomes. So, when I'm assessing an intended learning outcome, the assessment test needs to activate the action that was implied in intended learning outcome. Remember, the student will be able to, in relation to the object indicated in the context that was specified. Up to this point, we have analyzed this dimension in terms of assessment strategies. In the next video, we will consider the form of the tests the assessment criteria and the structure of feedback. Mm -hmm.